Hello and welcome. We are Arams and Emily, and last year we bought Ford Transit to convert into our very own Haven on Wheels. In this episode, we almost finished the kitchen unit. We try and create a worktop for under £50 and make a start on the wiring. Grab a cuppa and join us on the next stage of our build. So this weekend, she passed her MOT. Well done, Flossie. We're back at the farm and we have a plan. So we want to take her out this bank holiday weekend. So we have a couple weekends to make this suitable to take it out for a night or two. So we have a lot of things to do. We do, we need to crack on and we also need to figure out, now we've taken her for a bit of a test run, Masking tape is not appropriate <laughs> for drawers. So, so these two drawers are soft clothes drawers. They have some sort of like a bit of hold. So these two not sliding, but I think with stuff inside the and with the weight inside, really pulling out. if you're taking a really hard right turn, it does pull out. Which I didn't think it would actually, but it did. So we're going to have to figure out how we can secure them. Then we need to finish the kitchen. And Put a worktop on the top so at least we've got a space to cook if it is poor weather. And we need to get some sort of mattress or something, if not. If we don't have time for a mattress then it will be a blow up bed just to be able to take mm. her out for a quick trip. So let's finish this kitchen. First job of the day was to paint the pre-made drawers from last week. Whilst I cracked on with this, Aramis was busy making the last drawer for the kitchen unit. Once made, it was time to measure, level and fit the drawer runners. This was a tricky job. We had to make sure the drawers were closed flush to the unit and that they were perfectly level. This took a few minor adjustments, but all in all, a pretty straightforward job. At this point, I may have snuck off for a little nap. The heat gets to me, all right? After some research, our perfect worktop was gonna set us back a lot of money. So we decided to make our own with the aim of achieving this challenge for under 50 pounds. Is it possible to get our desired look for less? We had thought about using ply as we had a sheet in the workshop, but after thinking it through, it wouldn't have given us the end result that we wanted. So, how to achieve a cost-effective DIY worktop? Step one, off to a local wood merchant we go. So, we need some boards for our worktop. And there's plenty of them here. And I think if we can find some sort of off cuts for cheap, that will be perfect. Step two, both agree that 175 mil is what we wanted and buy. I think we're gonna buy some 175 mil boards. They're already nicely cut, flush cut and We don't have to mess around with it. cutting it, just give it a bit of a sand down. It's pretty much good to go, isn't it? Yeah. I like this. This set us back 32 pounds. Step three, get supplies. Uh, next stop, B and Q. Uh, we need some. What do we need from here? Bits, varnish, hinges, oh, yeah, varnish. hoses. Um, and probably I'm going to forget something anyway. The varnish set us back thirteen pounds. The stain we already had, and the screws we also already had. So in total, we spent forty-five pounds on materials. As you can see, the kitchen is looking a bit scratchy and whatever, but we've got the handles. And we finally decided on our worktop. We were debating on uh, what material to use. In the beginning we were thinking to use plywood. Just because we had it. But I don't like the finish of plywood. Other option was to buy a worktop, but the prices of worktop are... And the weight as well. So we decided to do DIY yeah. worktop. We went to the wood merchant and we got some wood planks. 20 millimeters thickness or 25, I don't remember now. 25 of they feel like they've been sanded a bit, they feel yeah. like they've sort of been ready to so, use, which saves us a bit of time and a few jobs, which is what we need this weekend. We've got lots of painting to do in the interim, so there's all sorts of things we need to get done, finish yes. the drawers and whatever else, so we need to get started now. Let's make a laptop, ready? Go. Step four, choose which side will be on top. Step five, drill pocket holes on the ends of the underside to connect them together. Step six, use strong wood glue along the edges. Disclaimer, have ID to hand when you're purchasing wood glue? I got ID'd. 
So apparently what? now you get ID'd for glue. Yeah. I mean, I kind of. So, so what stage that thing needs to be ID'd for? See, we're gonna be 16, 18, or 20, challenge 25, but I was stood next to Amrus. I didn't get ID'd. Maybe it's because he was buying it, but I'm assuming that's what they meant. But it doesn't say anywhere on the stand that you'll be ID'd for it. Yeah, but I know, I, I see what, what the, what's, I do what's get the it. point. But... I do get it, but that's the first time I've ever known anybody to get ID'd for glue. <laughs> so take your ID when you're getting wood glue. And fix screws for extra strength. Repeat this until all planks are connected. Step seven, plane or sand the top to create a nice flush finish. Note to self, Practice planing on old wood plenty of times before using on your worktop. Step 8. Cut planks to decide worktop size and check the fit. We cut it to size, so we're going to try to put it on now before we start sanding. Yeah, that way. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty flushed, all things considered. Yeah, we almost got our worktop, look at that. So we want to have a little backsplash. One, it's just good to have one, and two, the walls are white and trying to get a nice flush finish on the walls is also really difficult. We're hoping that there might be a way we can somehow put the remaining bits that we've cut along the back, which will just give it a little lip, protect the wall a little bit from any splashing, and eliminate the gap at the back without having to cut into the worktop because we are quite lucky we have a worktop. It was our first time using a planer, so we went in a bit trigger happy and started really making some deep grooves in it. So we're hoping the sanding and the staining will just hide all of that. Step nine, sand top side and round off the edges for an aesthetically pleasing finish. Hi, my name's Emily and I rounded off the edges of this wood. You've done a really good job. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Now I just want to keep some itching to stain it. Step 10. Create a backsplash with the off cut. Step 11. Stain worktop with as many coats as you wish. We chose three coats to match the ceiling slats. And step 12. Varnish the worktop for extra shine and leave to dry. Whilst the worktop was drying, I made a start on the inner walls of the kitchen. Originally, we were not going to do this, but quickly realised that when the drawers were open, a lot of the bare wood was visible and it didn't look very pretty. It's not the best job in the world, but I don't think it necessarily needs to be perfect. It just no. needs to be a bit covered. So, I cleared the reversing camera. Now it's going to be the first time I'm going to try it. But I should <laughs> click the switch. <gasps> yes! We got the camera. I had to drill the hole in the back door. Good thing about this camera, I had it laying around somewhere, so I thought, why not just to fit it? I think main thing is that it's wireless. So you don't need to run the wire from one end to the other end. So that's done. Another job ticked off. Uh, we are tired. We had a long day. This time at least it was productive because we got the work done. Then still drying. We're gonna have to sand it. But I think that's gonna be tomorrow's first job. Sand it, varnish it. Give it a chance to dry. And then by the end of the day it should be dry so we can at least fix it in place. Yeah. I repainted the front of all the drawers so all the drawers and doors are ready now and i think tomorrow mainly i'm going to focus to start wiring up all the electric so when our power station arrives we literally just need to plug in and that's it that's yeah done. we ordered a power station yeah so i think that's going to be a completely other video we're not going to start explaining why power station and why not leisure battery we have a reason and we will we will touch on that yeah at a later date. food time now please food time, yeah. mm. See you tomorrow. our first job was to scribe the work talk to the backsplash and prep for a second coat of varnish 
coats of varnish is completely up to you, but we wanted it to feel super smooth and this also helped even out some of the ripples in the wood. By her, oh, 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 oh got my head. You say, you say first, we don't really have many attempts. Well, no. Now that, that could yeah. not have gone better. I know it's going to be easy to tell because it's all a bit dusty now, but that is literally no gap the whole way across the back. Literally. Flush all down the side here and a nice little lip. Do we need to stain that? We could. could, could if like we've got enough edge, left, yeah. we could just stain underneath because I wasn't sure how much to stain back. But that is beautiful. Lovely. High five. Yeah. Let's get sanding. Our call box arrived. This isn't a sponsored ad, but high gear, if you fancy it. We purchased this from Amazon. Uh, you can get it uh, on multiple sources. Go Outdoors, Amazon, eBay. Prices are very. quite yeah, very. Like you can get it for 90 quid, 100 quid. We managed to find one place that sells it for 55, I think, at the moment. It's 28 litres, isn't it? That's going to be more than enough room for everything we need. All we need it for really is like refrigerated food, water, or like cold drinks yeah, and stuff. Uh, milk. And that really is about it. We got two plugs, two forty, and twelve volt. But what we're gonna do? We're gonna chop this off, and we're gonna wire straight to our fuse box. Obviously, we're gonna put a switch or whatever if we want to turn it on or off. Those things where okay, <clears throat> price is good. We're rating it at the moment, but time will tell whether it's gonna be beneficial in the long run. Yeah. But this is something we need to test, and obviously, we'll come back to you if we have difficulties or whether it's not quite right for whatever reason but I don't see that it's going to be it's a cool box yeah it's yeah. all it needs to be and the main thing now is it going to fit to our drawer so this is the drawer that we have pre-made and this is the drawer that we have specifically made for this cool box snug fit yes and room for bottled water spare bottled water anything. could go at the back here literally anything that you know whatever but that let me show you this side is literally the perfect fit whilst aramis began to wire up the fuse box to make sure all was working i started the back breaking job of painting the inner parts of the benching similar to the kitchen this was something that we didn't plan to do and although it won't be seen unless the bench lifts are lifted it seemed a shame to leave it bare and we have plenty of paint left over to cover it so while she's been doing that, I temporarily wired up our fuse box just to make sure everything's fine before I fix it in place. So we've got a switch here, which turns the lights on. Fan and the lights also working. That side should be all nice and dry and I can fix this fuse box in place and try to tidy up these wires behind the kitchen. Once the wires tied up, we can Check all the drawers in, put the handles on. Maybe even by that time, our books are gonna be dry enough to fit it on the, on the top. Fuse box good to go. It was time to fix into place underneath the bench. Aramis then installed the breaker switch for the solar panel and a few other wires for the cool box, power station, and lights. The last job was to fit the gold drawer handles to the drawer front. It feels so lovely. <laughs> Oh, it does. It feels like glass. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to fix it onto the top just temporarily because we will have to take it off when it comes to placing the sink in, right? But this is just so we've got a workspace for when we go away next weekend, just so we've got some room. So it's fix that on, then put the drawers in one by one with the handles on. The bottom. We'll do that and we'll see how we get on. I mean, I am going to blow our own trumpets here, but how good does this look? That worktop, the handles, everything. I mean, obviously there's nothing's perfect. Gaps not even. Right. I'm going to stop you there. Have you ever built a kitchen unit before? Exactly. That's our first time of doing this thing and I'm well pleased with how it turned out. And all of them, there's no false drawers like we thought we might have. Every drawer 
has its uses. We're hoping the sink will be fine. This is our door. This drawer. Soft close, if you will. This drawer. Soft close, if you will. And this drawer. Not soft, <laughs> Not soft close. close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, Sandy. Hello, oh, Sandy. Sandy. You <laughs> What do you think? Do you, do you like think? the kitchen? Do you like the kitchen? Have a look around, are you? What do you think? Do you like think? it? Do you like it? They're all the way down. So we've got Sandy's approval. Yeah, so what we've got left now is just tidy up all this tidy mess. Up, give it a bit of a hoover and a wipe down if we can, just with some water or something, and then probably slap a coat of varnish on here just to kind of even it out and give it a week to dry before we take her out next Saturday. Yeah. I just love how it's come out. I love that it's not perfect. It gives it character. I don't, I'm just super happy with it. I don't know. I'm so excited. <laughs> What you'll find out on the next episode. No, you'll just be joining us on our trip. Any guesses where we might be going? Put them down there. We'll see you on Flossie's first rodeo. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this episode and supporting us on our first van conversion journey. We don't always know what we're doing, but we are enjoying this process. See you next time on our very first trip away. Bye.